In order for us to keep our cars in tip top shape, we've always something that has to be checked. We have suspicion that there's a little bit of an issue with the turbo. I know there's an issue with the crossover. There's a handful of other things that we're gonna look at. So we're gonna go ahead and get the uh, car unstrapped. We get it up on the lift. There's a couple things here on the channel that I'm gonna show you about the turbo kips specifically that we actually showed you on the black car that we had an issue with last time. I'm also gonna point out a couple maintenance things. So you might wanna stick around, might catch something that you, uh, you, you, you didn't know. See you in a minute. I know it always seems like we're always putting our cars up on the lift. Every other video, it shows us like slow-mo or whatever, but you know, that's just the maintenance of uh, a turbo car, of a modified car, or just a Fox body in general. And being that these cars are 30, 35, 40 years old at this point, plus uh, there's a lot of things that are going bad in these Mustangs. And we often talk on live streams about a, a lot of the stock and modified items that you know, just go bad over time, that stuff that you should look for. So make sure you guys go check out my channel if you're here on a little bit of how-to tech stuff, got a lot of stuff in live streams, top 10 this, top 10 that, you might wanna go check out. Here in our white car, we got a couple things underneath the hood I wanna show you. So what's got me concerned about my turbos, I think there might be something in the, the housing. And if you remember correctly, we had the same kind of issue with the black car. We took the turbo off. We ended up finding like the, the, the rear turbine had a bunch of damage on it or whatever, and I had to send it back to precision. So that's kind of where we're at with this. I haven't taken this turbo off in years. I'm a big advocate on when it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I have to at least check. As I am just gonna go ahead and take the, the housing off to get the, to check behind the blades. And I'm also gonna take the crossover off to cut the, well, we'll talk about that here in a minute. So one of the things with maintenancing when you uh, actually have you know, turbos and supercharger cars is, you know, keeping your oil fresh. As we always keep our oils fresh in our E85 cars. You know, when you're running 160 pound injectors, you tend to get quite a bit of E85 in your, in your car. But there's stuff in the pen grade uh, Brad Pen oil that there's a lot of zinc in it that helps keep the uh, engine protected from the E85. So, and I always just use a MicroGuard 51311. I haven't had any issues with it. I actually got a handful of them up there that we need to cut open as we're going to probably cut up on some other ones too. So last time we changed oil in here was October 25th. I always like to put the date on it. And I had a couple folks asking me about my oil pan. This is just the life that you have to lead when you, uh, when you have an oil pan that likes to crack. I've had a little bit of issue with this one. We just put some right stuff on it and it seemed to quit leaking. <laughs> It is what it is, boys. Now, I know you guys just always uh, <laughs> been seeing them underneath of my car quite a bit lately, but we're always checking stuff. We're gonna go over our drive shaft bolts one more time. We're gonna check our upper and lower control arms to make sure everything's tight, nothing's falling off, and we're actually gonna go ahead and try to mount our weights and see what they look like. Yeah! <laughs> it's green. Hey, look, there's no uh, water in it. That's a good thing. Right. Oh, you can smell the 85. <laughs> it's pretty bad. That's why we change it so much. Let's look at this. Uh... Mm -hmm. So we got this oil filter off. What we're actually gonna do is we're gonna end up cutting this out. Like I said over there, we had a couple of them marked with dates and I always mark my oil pan with a date too. So, you know, if you ever have any question on when you change the oil last. I'm gonna cut this open and I'm gonna look for the small little details of stuff that might be going wrong in my engine. This is one thing that can tell you what possibly be wrong if something breaks inside the engine that hasn't surfaced yet definitely cutting your oil filter open give you an idea now obviously you want to be careful cutting it open you don't want to get cut or anything like that because this is all sharp metal or whatever but there's a filter inside of this that you can kind of sift through after the oil's you know gone and the remnants of bad things like 
um, bearing damage or, or something that might have broke off in the engine will be inside there and reveal itself. So, so Cousin Paul's back here doing a little bit of wrenching. What you checking on, Cousin Paul? Checking the lowers, uppers. I checked the drive shaft, even though we just installed it. You know, sphericals, make sure your sphericals aren't coming apart. And for you, you folks that are messing around with stock Fox bodies, this is very important because these uh, these bushings are always cracked up and torn out. And that includes the bushings on your control arms. So we run sphericals because we kind of get rid of the bushing or whatever, but the I guess what I'm talking about is there's these things that you can pop in, these upper 8.8 .8 bushings, you can see them right there, that are normally tore out. If you really look at them, they get really messed up. So at this day and age, these cars are getting to the point to where these things, stuff like this, always going bad. I can almost guarantee you if the car's stock, there's an issue with some bushings, not just in the rear, but also here in the front on the control arms. Definitely want to check that out. So there's always maintenance to be had with these Fox bodies for sure. We're just maintaining a higher horsepower modified car, but all the same stuff that we're doing right now still apply to stock Fox bodies. So the next thing we're about to do on the video is for you turbo guys, uh, this crossover piece, I'm always modifying my turbo kits to make them more efficient. As you can see, I got like a two, two and a half inch uh, wastegate inlet you see here, just so this thing can, you know, that's a 66 millimeter wastegate. So if you wonder how I control my boost in this little turbo kit, all the boost right there. We are going to, we see some of the carbon buildup. We think that this is starting to leak a little bit. Um, and what happens is these things deteriorate and they can get stuck up in your turbo where the exhaust housing is. And that's another thing we're gonna be checking today to make sure it didn't damage our turbo, so. Tappy tap tappies. All right. Hey. Is he here? But this is something that I did on my my black turbo car that I should have done on this a long time ago. But but when shit ain't broke, don't fix it. So this is pretty heavy duty gauge uh, steel, so we're just gonna slip it over top of it again. We're not really worried about it. So what we're actually gonna do is install it in the car and we're gonna slip it over top of it to take this coupler out. And once I got it where I want it, I'll take a, uh, um, a welder, just tack weld it, bring it down and weld the whole thing up. So, I mean, it could have been leaking. It could not have been leaking, but I don't like those. So I take it off. So as you can see, I made a cross piece here. Uh, it's not the best looking thing, but I got rid of the coupler. So I gotta make sure that the flanges are lined up when I get ready to start tacking everything together. Cause this is gonna be a permanent setting. You gotta make sure your flanges are, and you know, some of the newer or some of the better turbo kits have like a lock flange inside. So just gotta make sure they're lined up good. So I've been looking to cut this shit out for years. Be honest with you. It don't look too bad. My welds were actually pretty good for a MIG weld, but uh, we just went ahead and put this back over where that uh, used to be, the flex coupler used to be. You know, big shout out to Cousin Paul for sticking around for a few a few hours afterwards, but uh, it helped me get this in. This is kind of a lot easier with two people because one guy can stabilize it. It's a little bit heavy on the side, and the other guy can uh, get the clamps set and they're lined up. But I've been looking to cut this thing out for many years now, and I do a little bit of maintenance on my turbo system, and... Well, it's not what I wanted to do, but I 100% knew this was gonna happen. Just like the other turbo in the black car, there's considerable damage here on the, on the actual wheel. You can see there's been chipped and laid over or whatever. Fortunately, I have a replacement for it, meaning that I can just put the larger housing ball bearing turbo that we had rebuilt on the white car and keep on rolling. But, and then we get that put back in that box over there and sent back to Precision and get it upgraded just like that one did. So guys, stick around. Things are about to get a little bit 
probably faster for us here on the channel, um, a little more efficient. We'll be heading back to the dyno to check the AFR on the dyno because you guys know we're still on an A9L here. Um, yeah, it works. I'm not gonna mess with it. Fix the crossover this video, which was probably a little bit of the issue that could be happening right there on top of back pressure. I think this turbo over here will definitely alleviate some of that back pressure. Plus it's a, a better gen two wheel and a ball bearing. So still got some stuff with the, uh, the, the dad's car to do. We're gonna be doing the 387 on this. This is gonna be kind of the beginning of us taking this motor out. Guys, stick around. Just an update video. Appreciate everybody for watching. I will see you soon in the next video. Thank you. Have a good night.